Washington has so far refused to back Israel's belligerent stance on Iran, and now many see Obama's win as an opportunity for new talks with Tehran on its nuclear program. Let's discuss that with uh, independent researcher and writer Soraya Sapapur Alrik. Now, first off, how do you assess the outcome of the U.S. presidential election? Um, I was surprised that it went so smoothly with all the irregul irregularities. Um, but Mr. Obama is the public diplomacy face, the soft power face of the United States. And he is the one who's capable of bringing together allies to support his decision, whatever that decision may be. So in a sense, America's ability to pursue its foreign policy is much stronger under Obama than it would have been under Romney. Four years ago, Obama promised to extend the hand of cooperation to Iran. I mean, will he be able to do that now? Um, it depends how genuine people believe Mr. Obama to be. Mr. Obama in 2004, um, excuse me, 2006, when he was a junior senator, he had, he underwrote very strict sanctions against Iran. And he did, in fact, address APAC in 2008 when he was running as a candidate. And his sole goal was to show the world that America is willing to engage Iran. And he would have put, and such hard preconditions would have been put on these diplomatic talks and engagements that Iran would be forced to reject them. But by showing that he is a person that is into multilateral talks, he would bring on board the reluctant um, allies, which were really tired of war and talks of war after the Bush administration. So he's very clever. His foreign policy goals are not any different than the previous administrations. He's just far more clever at uh, accomplishing his goals. The reaction from uh, Tehran on Obama's re-election has been, well, fairly cautious. Uh, with some of the country's officials saying relations with America cannot be repaired overnight. But how much willingness uh, to cooperate can we expect from Tehran? Um, I hope that Tehran will cooperate as much as it can and it has done in the past. But if the whole issue that is being discussed here is Iran's nuclear program, America knows well that Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program. And I think your viewers should be... Um, we should know that if Iran did in fact want to have a bomb, a nuclear bomb, it would follow the path of South Africa, apartheid South Africa, which got its nuclear bombs with help from Israel without an operating nuclear power plant. So I don't believe that Iran would intentionally put itself in the spotlight, subject itself to sanctions, um, so that it can misguide the world and allow them to, you know, and, and in reality pursue a bomb. That is not Iran's intentions. Iran does need its nuclear power, and it needs the medical isotope. Let's, let, let's talk a little bit about Israel. Uh, where does this leave Israel? Do you think it will choose to attack Iran unilaterally if no one supports to back it? I don't believe Israel would ever make that decision. I think this is just talk, and as long as Israel makes such threats... Um, the, an attack on Iran would have a, such an enormous impact that a lot of countries would be affected, not just the region, European countries and even America. So I think Israel is making these threats to ensure that, that the other nations cooperate with such harsh sanctions, which are immoral sanctions killing innocent people, as they did with Iraq. But Israel would never, never, I, don't, I would bet my money on it, that it would never attack. Let's leave it right there. Thank you very much. Independent researcher and writer Soraya Sefapur Arik for talking to us this morning.